So how is it going to help us that we have um, compact functions in the form of one over one minus X or one over one minus X to the power something um, to observe that we are going to actually extend the binomial theorem here. How are we going to extend it? You see in the uh, original form of the binomial theorem, one plus X to power N equals the sum for K equals zero up to N and choose K X to power K. But here N is a positive integer. The power N here is a positive integer. Um, and of course the binomial coefficients N choose K uh, as we know, are equal to n factorial divided by k factorial n minus k factorial. Now, we are going to define the extended binomial coefficient where n is not an integer necessarily. It's a real number. And k here is a natural number. So either zero or a positive integer. But n can be a real number. It can be a negative number, it can be a fraction, etc. But the definition is an n times n minus 1, n minus 2, uh, all the way to n minus k plus 1, divided by k factorial. Now, don't forget k here is an integer, n not necessarily. Okay, so when k is equal to 0, we define this to be equal to 1. When k is non-zero, remember it's a natural number, which means it's a positive integer in this case, uh, then this is the definition of the extended binomial coefficient. Obviously, when n is an integer, this boils down to the usual definition we know. But this gives us a way to define the binomial coefficients when n is not an integer or a positive integer rather. So the extended binomial theorem is stated here, one plus X to power N, and N here is a real number, okay, uh, is equal to the sum, which is an infinite sum here, K equals zero to infinity, and choose K times X to power K. Now, look, this one is a finite sum, K equals zero up to N. This one is different. This one has an infinite sum, K equals zero up to infinity and choose k. And here is potentially a real number. k are integers. Now, um, how is this useful? The, the most useful case uh, in this context is when n is a negative integer. You see, this is more general and it can handle cases like where n is a, a fractional number like 3.2. It still works, but uh, that's that's not much use to us. And what we are interested in when n is a negative integer. Why? Because we have functions of the form 1 over 1 minus x to the power 5, for instance. So this is equal to 1 minus x to the power negative 5. So we can use this theorem uh, to actually represent such functions using power series. Okay, so using the definition of the extended binomial coefficient given here, I can actually express one plus X to the power minus N, where N is still a positive integer. So to the power minus N means this is equal to one over one plus X to the power N, where N is a positive integer. This is equal to, uh, based on this theorem, uh, K equals zero to infinity, the sum, minus n choose k times x to power k and this here when n is a positive integer can be written as n plus k minus one choose k uh, times minus one to power k right so this you can obtain by just applying this definition it's really trivial i'm not going to do it you can do it yourself because it's so simple just plug this in uh, you will see that this is equal to this and this minus uh, comes from uh, negating each of these terms here because n turns out to be a negative value. And if you change the sign here to, uh, to minus, you get this expression. The only difference is this term disappears because, well, um, this uh, will bring a, a further term of minus one to power k, which cancel each other out. So these two are really uh, the useful expressions we are going to 
use when manipulating gen uh, generating functions. So here's a simple example. How many ways are there to distribute 20 balls to five boxes if each box needs to have more than one ball? More than one means at least two or more. So therefore, I will start my generating function for each selection for each box um, from power two, x to power two plus x to power three, dot, dot, dot. Now, in, in my earlier solution with, with the cookie problem, and um, I, I kept this generating function up to x to power, well, in this case, it would be 20. Then you can even cut it down more because you want at least two at each box. So you can uh, actually cut this down to how many? Um, I, I think 12. Because uh, if, if you have 13 in a box, that leaves seven which you cannot distribute at least two to each remaining four boxes. So that would be uh, truncated up to x to the power 12. But rather than truncating it, we actually extend it towards infinity because now this function, I can express this as, well, first of all, uh, take uh, the, the common term x squared out, one plus x plus dot, 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 this thing to the power five. So x to the power two to the power five will give me x to the power 10 times one plus x plus x squared dot 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 to the power five. Now, remember the question, uh, I'm looking for ways to distribute 20 balls to five boxes. 20 balls means um, in this generating function, I'm looking for the coefficient of x to the power 20 but I have x to the power 10 here. Therefore, I'm just looking for the coefficient of x to the power 10 in this expression, in, in, in this term, because I already have x to the power 10 here. So the coefficient of x to the power 10 within this part will give me the desired result. But this can be written as x to the power 10 times one over one minus x to the power of five, because this thing in the parentheses is simply one over one minus x. Therefore, what I'm looking for is simply, this is one minus x to the power minus five. So I need the coefficient of the term x to the power 10 in one minus x to the power minus five. Okay, so this is a good example that I can apply the extended binomial theorem. And therefore, the, the coefficient of x to power 10 will simply be minus 10 choose, sorry, minus five choose 10. Simply this here. You see, the coefficient of x to power k is minus n choose k. So in my example, that would be minus five choose 10 because uh, n is minus five, k is 10. And furthermore, I know that minus n choose k is equal to n plus k minus one choose k. So using this relationship, I put here, uh, n here is minus five, uh, or rather, if you look at uh, minus n choose k equals n plus k minus one choose k. Right, so in my case, this is minus five choose 10. So n is equal to five, k is equal to 10. So this will be equal to five plus 10 minus one choose 10. So this is equal to 14 choose 10.